Hello everybody, today is the last video of schizophrenia whereby we're going to be looking at the interactionist approach to both explaining and treating schizophrenia. Now the first thing to point out here is that this is actually, sorry I bit my tongue and it really hurts, um, this is actually quite a complex point in the sense of you have to know an explanation and a treatment for one bullet point. Whereas before the explanations are all in one bullet point, the treatments are all in one bullet point. But actually, you know everything to do with this already. So it shouldn't actually, whilst it's a complicated matter, it may actually not take that long to go through. So the theory actually that you don't know is what's called the diathesis stress model. So I'm going to go on that in a bit more detail in a second. But as, as it says there, it's unlikely that a disorder as complex as schizophrenia can be treated in solely a biological or a psychological way. There's so much evidence that's amounted to both sides of the argument that it just makes sense to actually accept that both of them do have an impact. Oh, it's so painful. So as it says here, it's much more likely going to be a combination or an interaction between biological, social and psychological factors. So everything you have learned so far is basically going to be combined into what's called the diathesis stress model. Now, the diathesis stress model is basically the concept that you have a biological vulnerability that is triggered by environmental stress resulting in schizophrenia. And it's not solely biological or it's not solely environmental, but clearly it is a combination of both. So the diathesis stress model, the first part of it is this idea about a disposition. So um, the first part of this is that having certain, bio, uh, let me phrase it this way, having certain biological factors may make you vulnerable, vulnerable or create a predisposition to having schizophrenia. Key point, but it's not enough to just have the predisposition. You may have the genes for schizophrenia, but that does not necessarily mean that you are going to get it. And this is the diathesis part of this. This is the diathesis part. Now, initially, in meals, which I'll go through later on, uh, original theory, it was thought that the diathesis was always biological. Right? You had to have a biological vulnerability, a biological predisposition. But modern models or revised models kind of now think that actually if you are born immune, as in you have no biological vulnerability whatsoever, if you're born without vulnerability, but you have a traumatic childhood, that can later become a predisposition. So one thing to write down here is that the modern theories of this no longer assume that the the diathesis has to be biological like a gene or altered biochemical roots and things like that nowadays people now believe that childhood trauma can act as a vulnerability i.e childhood trauma is not enough by itself to trigger the schizophrenia but it may make you vulnerable to later stressors uh, down the line so that's the, diathe that's the diathesis part. Now, one thing to actually note is I'm talking about solely the, the interactionist explanations here. The interactionist treatments will come in a second. The second part of this is the, the stress part, right? So you need to understand what actually can act as stressors, stressful events, um, in order to actually cause uh, an, an onset of schizophrenia or a relapse of schizophrenia. So the stress part is basically any major environmental stressful event that someone actually experiences. So it could be a divorce, for example. It could be um, uh, someone dying or uh, major life changes. Um, it may be, it may be the little drips in the bucket. You know, maybe you've just got, you know, nothing majorly stressful going on, but you've got an absolute ton of minor stresses and you reach like a threshold. It triggers off the biological vulnerability and all of a sudden you have schizophrenia. So having the gene is not enough. And this was seen in Meals, Meals 1964 original model of the diathesis stress model. When Meal suggested that actually you have a schizo gene, literally one single schizophrenic gene that gets then triggered by an environmental stress. 
we no longer really believe this because there's never been one single gene that's appeared in every single schizophrenic individual, meaning that actually it's probably more uh, a case of multiple genes acting together than anything else, to be honest. So that is the explanation for interactionism with schizophrenia, the diathesis stress model. The diathesis stress model is not necessarily exclusive to schizophrenia. You could explain it for depression, for example. You could use it to explain um, eating disorders. You know, people have a biological vulnerability to this thing, like alcoholism, for example. Alcoholism is very biological, but yet it can get triggered by, it, it, um, it largely is triggered by um, uh, environmental stressors. So these are the things that do come under both diathesis and uh, stress and you do need to know these so yes your genes can play a role maybe you've got faulty dopamine dop dopaminergic systems which can act as a vulnerability alone that dopaminergic system is not enough for you to trigger schizophrenia but if you then have uh, family dysfunction or a substance abuse or, or you know critical life events such as a relationship breakdown or divorce or even christmas um that can be enough for you to actually trigger off a, a schizophrenic episode. So the one thing I want to say about this, and the key mistake that people make about this, is when they describe this, they describe the diathesis separately, they describe the stress separately. No, 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 no. Don't do that. What you need to be able to do is when you're in the exam, do not simply describe both sides. You have to specifically kind of state how it's, it's the word trigger. The word trigger is the most important. You have to you have to be able to talk about the interactionism. You have to talk about how both the diathesis and the stress interact with each other in order to trigger off the stress. So make sure you're making that connection because if you don't, if you don't refer to the word trigger, you know, environmental stress or triggering the biological vulnerability, you won't actually get any marks for this. So it's a really, really important thing to be able to know. Now, the main piece of research that I tell my students, your your teachers may be very different, is Walker. Walker, I think Walker is a brilliant study, personally. I think Walker is a really, really good study. Um, reported that schizophrenics have higher levels of cortisol. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone. It gets released when you are stressed. So this is slightly good evidence that actually schizophrenics are more stressed. The problem you have here, by the way, is you could easily argue well, that, of course, schizophrenics are more stressed. They have schizophrenia. But that's not exactly a fun, jovial experience, is it? But Walker actually found that, um, uh, where is it? I think he, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll get onto that in a second. Um, Walker found that stress-related increases in cortisol levels heighten genetically influenced abnormalities. And actually, by the way, the bigger the amount of cortisol the individual had, the worse the symptoms were. Right. So again, Walker, whilst not named in the spec, is a really, really good piece of research to be able to use here. Now, the great thing about Walker, in my opinion, IMO, is that actually Walker found the cortisol levels were higher before the onset. That's you may want to go back and just read why that's so important. Right. If I go back here, you could easily say, well, what what came first? the stress or the schizophrenia. But actually, Walker's countered that and found that the cortisol levels were high before they even got schizophrenic symptoms, um, which supports the idea that cortisol may be a triggering event, a stressful event that gets placed upon the body that triggers off these biological vulnerabilities. The fact that genes need to be activated by particular stressors to express themselves supports the diathesis stress model, but this has massive, monumental, practical applications. Do you now realize, by the way, if this explanation is true, it literally does not matter if you have the genes for schizophrenia. If we can protect you from the stress, if we can train you to deal with stress better, if we can improve your stress management, if we can identify what things are stressful to you, if we can inoculate you to that, for example, protect you, vaccinate you against the stress, if we could train you to be better at dealing with stress, then you will not trigger off. Um, you will not trigger off 
that biological vulnerability. Shit, we could do this about depression. We could do this about eating sorts. We could do this about alcoholism. So the interactionist approach has massive practical applications because we could potentially protect people who are vulnerable to actually not getting schizophrenia. It's huge. It really is huge. So although it's clear, uh, and now all these are stre- all these are strengths, by the way. The only weakness here, the only weakness, and we're going to need to do more research. Whilst it's clear environmental, biological, psychological, and social factors all do contribute and interact, what's not clear is this word, is specifically how it happens. We don't really know, you know, like on a physical level, we must be able to see it. But so far, we've not been able to see it. So we don't really under we know that they interact but we do not know exactly how they interact like the processes and the mechanisms of what go on you know how exactly do you turn on a gene for example bentel's meta analysis though 2012 shows that stress arising from abuse does actually increase the risk of developing schizophrenia so again further evidence there is a model answer just here in this case this one is just this one is just basically saying how interactionism is better than what I call single faceted explanations, like the dopamine hypothesis, which is strictly biological, or the family dysfunction explanation, which is strictly psychological. So again, you are going to want to know how to elaborate. Look at that high and explanatory power and its practical applications in that elaboration. Make sure you use those terms. But what you also need to know here and why this point is so difficult is interactionism in treating schizophrenia. So uh, this is basically just throw every drug tr- and uh, f- talking therapy you can at them. Now, for this, you kind of need to know who NICE are. NICE is the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, I think they're called. And NICE basically decide what drugs you can get on the NHS. So there are some drugs and some therapies that are brilliant, but they're too expensive and not cost effective for the um, for uh, the, the NHS to be able to use, right? This is how important, this shows you just how important treating schizophrenia is. Keep in mind, NICE are generally not liked because they have to tell the NHS, no, you can't have that drug, no, you can't have that drug, no, you can't have that drug, which kills tons of cancer patients every year. This shows you how important schizophrenia is. This is a quote from NICE where they say that basically the NHS has full funding, basically, to have the full range of psychological, pharmacological, social and occupational occupations, interventions. Throw everything at schizophrenia is basically what they're saying. You should expose patients to drug treatments, to social treatments, to occupational treatments, to talking therapies, for example, and you should throw everything at them. Sorry, cleaners just start hoovering. Just wonder if I have to run to shut the door. So I would recommend writing down that quote because it shows you just how important it is. But basically, I should actually answer your questions if you have them. What are interactionist treatments? Taking a multi-pronged approach of giving them drug therapy and CBT, family therapy, token economies, everything. Give them everything. Now, does it work? Guo is a fantastic piece of research that I would recommend you know. Not named in the spec, but they found that patients who receive a combination of antipsychotics and a therapy, now this is the important bit, have improved insight, quality of life, and improved social functioning than just taking antipsychotics alone. Combining the treatments makes it more effective and less likely that they're going to relapse. Now, one thing you do have to understand here is that where are we getting this money from? Drugs and therapy are both paid through the taxes, through NHS. I pay a lot of taxes. I already pay a shitload of taxes. I don't want to pay any more. But you do have to understand why actually definitely getting someone back to work is much better than maybe getting them back to work by just giving them drugs. What I do want to point out here, by the way, is actually what insight is. Insight is the extent to which you know you are actually ill. If you know you are unwell and need to go to the doctor, which a lot of schizophrenics don't, by the way, a lot of people with schizophrenia have incredibly bad insight. 
That's the point about delusions, isn't it? I think I'm God. I think I'm Jesus. I think I'm Moses. I think I'm Buddha, for example, right? They're not going, I, I'm really ill and I actually need to get rid of this delusion because I, this is, I am actually quite schizophrenic, right? They do not know they are unwell. They don't know that. Generally, they don't know they're unwell until they have interactionist treatments. And until they have interactionist treatments, um, uh, it's quite difficult to know you are unwell, Um People with depression generally have good insight. People with OCD generally have good in, insight into their condition. They know they're unwell, but people with schizophrenia do not terribly know it well. Sudak is another good piece of research, but I, I, I want to draw your attention, which feel free to pause and write it down, that I want to draw your attention to Taria, which I think is a better piece of research. Taria found that patients who were treated with drug therapy and CBT showed lower symptom levels than those only taking drugs, throwing... A multi-pronged approach at sufferers does actually work. So this interactionist treatment does actually work. The key bit I think you need to know here is that, okay, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. Feel free to pause this because these are all the these these are all of the strengths and weaknesses, particularly the um, uh, negatives. By the way, particularly the negatives. But um, I think this one is quite an important point. Um, uh, I will say this out very briefly. Interactionist approaches are better because CBT is a more permanent treatment, but you cannot give CBT to people who are severely schizophrenic because they don't want to go. They don't see the impact. They they, they don't have the time or the commitment or the energy or the motivation or the determination. They don't have any of this. Give them drugs as in antipsychotics. That, that will allow them to get to a place where they can start thinking more rationally and then they think, oh, okay, I need to go to therapy. So why interactionist approaches in treatments are so important is they complement each other. Short-term drug treatment get you to a rational place, boom, CBT, and therefore you're going to be more effective. Yes, on the one hand, it is more expensive on the one hand, it is more expensive. Of course, it's more expensive to give people drugs and therapy than just drugs. But at the end of the day, if you know you're going to fix someone with much more certainty and they're going to go into work and start earning taxes and start earning money and contributing to the economy, surely this short-term gain for long-term prosperity, this, sorry, this short-term pain for long-term prosperity is much better. For example, if I were to give you £10 and say, you're probably going to make 100 back, surely you would do that, right? Um, question for you just here in terms of diathesis stress, but that is actually all there is to it. So with the, uh, with the final bullet point made, that is now schizophrenia. If you're watching this for the first time, my advice to you would be for you to go away and... Um, uh, now make your flashcards for schizophrenia and fill in your workbooks and basically get everything ready for schizophrenia to be done before we move on to presumably relationships next week. Peace out.